We'll have a quick look at how the currency and the Nairobi Securities Exchange performed yesterday. And we saw the Kenyan shilling farming slightly to 86.0020 on Tuesday. And this was after it held its it held above its key support level. This morning, it opened at 86.00 on 10. Crossing over to the Nairobi Securities Exchange, we saw the main share index easing to easing 39 points to close the session at 4,641.07 points while the all share index edged down nearly 1% to stand at 117.29 points. With us in studio we have Agustin Mikosa. He is a research analyst with, with Sterling Investments. Thank you for joining us. You. Now we are seeing a downward trend in the Nairobi Securities Exchange. It now hit 4,600. Do we see a level that we can cling to and say this is the bottom level that we are likely to see? I think uh, the market will continue to correct downwards. And uh, for me, I place the floor at around 4,600 points. So maybe we will see you know, the market now bottom out at uh, these levels. But uh, still, I believe uh, uh, there is some more uh, downward uh, uh, potential for the market. Yeah, so we might see. So the going. bear run will continue? Yeah, th uh, the bear run will continue with uh, no corporate news coming in. Maybe we expect. Uh, the insurance sector or the financial sector to start re uh, releasing their half-year results uh, later on in maybe August. That's when maybe we might see some uh, a bullish run from the market again. All right. Looking at some of the news that were coming in yesterday with the reversal takeover of INM Bank, and we saw the share price moving to about 100. It closed at 100 and it opened at 93 uh, shillings. For you, what is the perception that you're drawing from the trades that we saw from yesterday? And also we, we saw that there was a lot of demand but no supply. I think for now, uh, the I and M uh, counter really is trying. The price is really trying to discover itself. Mm. So it's really too early to uh, to really talk about uh, the the counter. But I really think that I and M is a very strong uh, bank in the mid tier, and uh, they have a lot of potential right now. They're focusing more on the retail. I think uh, going forward, maybe we might see some uh, good results from them. They posted uh, a 1.5 billion profit before tax in the first quarter of this year. So I, I really think they are an, an interesting uh, uh, counter. And uh, for now, uh, on the price, it's more of trying to discover itself. So we, it's a kind of a wait and see. Looking at some of the plans that they have now that they're listed and they have the opportunity, some of the opportunities that they can arise uh, from listing, and one of them is that they're planning to have a capital uh, raising venture. For you, how do you think the, ma the market is going to perceive this? I think uh, having listed in the bows, it's now much, much easier for them to you know, raise um, um, money or capital for uh, their, some of their strategies. I think uh, the, they will be able to raise uh, the, the money, the capital from the market, but uh, again that will depend on uh, the period that they uh, they are focusing on. Is so it too close a call for them to start talking of capital raising and they've just listed uh, a day ago? I think uh, f for now it might be a bit early for them to you know uh, rush into a, for a capital call. I think uh, they uh, really will have to wait a little bit and then you know they can come into the market and you know, look for capital. And there's a time right to even think of a rights issue looking at how the market has been bare uh, you know this past few months. I think uh, for, for now really it's not the right time to to go into the market for a rights issue. Mm -hmm. So for, for them I believe they'll have to wait a little bit and then you know maybe towards the end of the year or maybe early next year that's when they can be able to plan for the cash call. All right and looking at the competitive landscape because they're coming in the mid tier we have the likes of NAC Bank which is very strong on asset financing. We have Diamond Trust Bank which is also very strong in the regional front. Uh, what is the key strength that you see with INM Bank? What what does it bring to the market? I think uh, I and them uh, bring uh, the fact that they are really a very strong bank. Looking at their uh, balance sheet, they are really strong. I think they can be able to venture. You know, the re retail sector is more of a, a, a very big market. So they can be able to venture there and they can be able to capitalize on uh, some of the gains that we're seeing NIC Bank and Diamond Trust Bank enjoying at the moment. So they will really bring uh, competition and it will be quite healthy for them. All right, we will be looking forward to that. Still keeping track on the financials. We have Housing Finance this morning saying that they're likely to have a bond issue uh, in the third quarter or fourth quarter of this year. And if successful, of course, this will be the second time that they're doing it. For you, what are your thoughts on uh, you know, the strategy that they have to actually do bond issues instead of rights issues? 
Um, I think uh, it will be the second bond that they're issuing in the, the past two years. And uh, based on, I think they're really looking at the market and the way interest rates are, are, are coming down at the moment. So they might be, they might really want to take advantage of that mm -hmm. and, you know, go into the market and uh, borrow some money. But I think uh, for them, the strategy being, they really are looking at investment in the uh, housing I sector. I think for them, yeah, the, the bond uh, will really be uh, a nice call for them. It might be a, a nice call since interest rates are, are coming down. So, yeah, I, I really think for them it's And, and nice. based on what we saw in the previous issues, they had two tranches and they were looking for 10 billion. It was well subscribed. And now we have the 91, which is a benchmark for interest rate coming in at 5%. For you, do you see like this is the time that even other banks or maybe even other companies need to think of probably, you know, bond issues? Yeah, right now, you know, looking at, uh, as you've mentioned, the 91-day paper uh, at 5.1%, and I still think that uh, it might even come down a little bit. And that being the benchmark for you know, the b bond market, I think this is the right time to come in and uh, issue a bond. So it is a uh, right time for housing finance. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Looking at the whole issue of the tourism sector, because now you're getting into the peak season, season sorry, and we have the world of its migration coming in. For companies like TPS Arena and Kenya Airways, what impact do you see from, from, you know, from as we get into the peak season? I think this is uh, an, another very interesting time for uh, the hot hotel industry as well as the airline industry. And uh, for TPS Arena, I think uh, the major st uh, stumbling block at the moment will be competition. We've seen uh, Ole Sereni, Sankara, you know, we're seeing more of uh, big hotels mm -hmm. coming up. So that's the only thing that they'll be trying to fight off uh, this season. But we might see their bed capacity increase and uh, due to the n increasing number of tourists. As well, it will be a very positive uh, news for Kenya Airways. Though still we know the global crisis is yet to you know, ca calm down completely. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I think uh, we might be seeing an increase in the number of uh, uh, tourists. So for them also passenger numbers will be uh, a bit high th uh, this season. So it's also good news for them. All right. So looking at Kenya Airways, you see also they're likely to benefit from this? Kenya Airways will benefit, yeah. There'll be an increase in passenger numbers. Yes. And that definitely will boost their revenues. All right.